Hello students, welcome to this lecture on another graph traversal algorithm known as breadth first search. So we have already discussed depth first search which is another graph traversal algorithm. So today we are going to discuss this one. Now in this very episode I will just give you brief intuition that what breadth first search means and how can we you know I mean like how does it work basically in a very 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 intuitive way very introductory way not how it is related to algorithm just very basics you know the way I have given you in the depth first search. So let's start with it and sit back relax and enjoy breadth first search. So, as the name suggests, the algorithm is breadth first search. What does it mean? It means the search criteria will now be based upon the breadth of the graph. So, what, is it, what does it mean exactly? So, for example, let's take a very small example. So, suppose for example, there is a pond and you must have, you know, done this in your childhood days. When you, you know, hit it with a small pebble, what you can see, what do you see? You see the waveforms spreading out in the pond like this, correct? And you must have seen this also in your class plus two um, uh, topic of optics in case of a spherical wavefront, right? So if something spreads from from the core, right, and it spreads along the breadth, correct? So the wave, how it is traveling? It's traveling by breadth as a criteria, right? It is just spreading out along the breadth equally in all the directions right so this is actually the breadth for search is also based upon a similar criteria so <clears throat> if you can see this is spreading out along the breadth uniformly so now how we can relate it to our graph theory so let me take a very small example and but yes it is important to understand the breadth first search. Now for example if I take if I take a, a very simple binary tree like this and these are the basically these are the nodes okay let me name this A B C D E F and G. Now if I ask you that how would you perform a breadth first search on this with source as A. So A will be your source node. Now keeping this analogy in mind you will try to answer it you know in this way that okay sir from the source some disturbance will travel and it will travel uniformly so something like this and then like this right so your answer would be something like that sir the breadth BFS traversal of this very simple graph which is also a simple binary tree is nothing but A then B and C, then D, E, F and G, right? So you are right. This is what breadth first search of this simple graph. So I hope you could understand right. Now if I modify just like this, so suppose if I add another node like 
um, H like this. So what your answer would have been in this case? Yes, you are right. So this H will also be part of this green wavefront, right? So in this case, your answer would have been nothing but A, B, C and then H, right? So this is your breadth first search. Now, having got this introductory idea, if I ask you a simple question, you must be able to have a starting point, you know, uh, of a starting point of thinking that, okay, what could be its applications? So breadth first search has many applications in the practical world. Now, one example could have been, for example, if you can imagine this as your uh, social networking graph, right? With you as A. B and C are your friends, right? We all use Facebook. So B and C are my friends. Now D and E are friends of friend. Is it not? Yes, they are. So I may ask you that now, with you as a center, find in some application, you need to find friends of your friend. For example, while sharing a pic or a status message, you just want, you don't want it to be shared with everybody, but only with friends or with friends of friends. So in that case, right, you need to search your whole graph using breadth first search. So there is slight inkling of this idea, correct? Now, what could be the second application? Again, the second application can be, so for example, now you can consider this, this graph. See, any practical thing can be modeled into a graph, right? So a graph could be very well used in scheduling your air flights, correct? In graph can be used in internet connectivity, in computer networking, with routers as your nodes, host as your leaf nodes, right? So BFS has, has tremendous applications, right? So in the next episode, we'll introduce a more formal introduction to the breadth first search. The purpose of this series is not only to just introduce you to an algorithm, write a, a pseudocode, find its complexity and make you solve questions. No, the main purpose is to have a very informal discussion so that you will never forget what BFS is. I hope after watching this video, you will never at least forget what, a, what is breadth first search, right? And I can assure you, the way we'll try to solve, we'll try to write its pseudocode, we'll try to analyze its complexity. You will never forget that too also. So in next chapter, we'll take up its, how it's implemented using data structures and we'll try to write its pseudocode and then do some practice problems and after that analyze its complexity. Thank you very much. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.